Hi, in this video, I'm going to go through the uh, OCR A-level chemistry paper, uh, the 2019 paper. Um, and this is paper three. And it's the second half of this paper. I did the first half in an earlier video. Okay, so we're starting off here with question five. Okay, this question is about copper sulfate and sodium thiosulfate. First bit is about copper sulfate. Okay, the enthalpy change for converting anhydrous copper sulfate, this stuff here, into hydrated copper sulfate, right, uh, is difficult to measure directly. You can't really measure it directly. However, you can measure it using a Hess's law cycle, okay? So what you do is, first of all, you work out the enthalpy change when you add water to anhydrous copper sulfate. So that's a white powder, anhydrous copper sulfate. You add excess of water to that, make a solution of it, okay? And you'll get a temperature change, and you can work out Q from, you know, Q is equal to MZ delta T, and then you can work out delta H from that. And then you do the same experiment. This time you dissolve um, hydrated copper sulfate, the blue crystals, in an excess of water to make a solution of copper sulfate, and you work out the enthalpy change for that. Okay, so that's what this this question is about. And before the that's the, the the preamble. Before they ask any of the questions, I've just drawn the energy cycle that you would use for this. Okay, so here you've got um, you've got uh, your anhydrous copper sulfate. Add water to it. You form the hydrated stuff, and that's what we want to work out this enthalpy change there on there. We want to work out that delta H. Um, and you add water to the anhydrous stuff in this equation here. So you work out the enthalpy change on that red arrow by experiment. And then you do a second experiment. You do it with a hydrated copper sulfate in reaction 5.3. Uh, and that will give you the delta H for this green arrow. And then you should be able to work out <coughs> the third side of the Hess's law. Triangle. Okay, so that's where this question is going. Now let's see what questions they ask. Okay, right. Okay, so here they have given us the the experimental method they used. So um, they got uh, an empty weighing bottle, weighed it, put some copper sulfate in it, weighed it again, so we can work out the mass of copper sulfate there. Let's do that. So the mass of copper sulfate, you're going to subtract those. That's then hydrous copper sulfate. So that's 28.04 minus 20.06. That's going to give us 7.98 grams of the solid. Okay. Um, now here they say they, they used about 50 centimeters cubed of water to the polystyrene cup. All right. So... <clears throat> We're going to work out the, the mass of the final solution there. So the mass of that, again, we're going to subtract 74.13, take away the other one. So the mass of solution is equal to 50.7 grams. Now that's going to give us our M. M in MC delta T. That's going to give us, uh, as we're going to work out there. <clears throat> okay, that's going to give us M in MC delta T. Uh, and then uh, we've, got, we've got delta T here. That is obviously going to be uh, 20.5 minus 34. So the other way around. That's going to give us 13.5 degrees C. Okay. All right. So we're going to have to use those to work out delta H for the reaction. Yeah. Okay. Then it says in experiment two, the student did that and they got, they give us the answer for this one. Okay. Um, first of all, what we've got to do is we've got to calculate um, the enthalpy change when you dissolve uh, copper sulfate into. Um, in water, okay, in the reaction 5.1. Okay, we can assume the specific heat capacity, see, for the solution is the same as water. We've got the mass of solution there, okay, 
that's a whole solution. And so we're going to put that in for the M there and they can tell us what C is 4.18. Okay. Uh, so we, first of all, we've got to find out, um, we have got to find out this Delta H here. Okay. This is what we're trying to find out. When you put in the anhydrous copper sulfate into water. Okay. So that's the first thing we've got to do is work out this Delta H. And then we're going to use that value in the energy cycle to work out this one. Okay, let's let's do that bit first then. Okay, so delta H. Um, so I'm going to work out here delta H so for the anhydrous copper sulfate. That's what we're going to find out here. Okay, so we're going to use the equation, we're going to use Q is equal to MC delta T. And then we need to convert that value of Q into delta H. So delta H is going to be equal to Q divided by the number of moles of copper sulfate. Uh, and I think I'll work out the moles of copper sulfate first of all. Let's do that. So moles of copper sulfate is equal to mass over MR. Uh, the mass is um, uh, 7.98 and the MR is of copper sulfate anhydrous is 159.6 and that gives us exactly um, 0 0.05 moles. Conveniently. Okay, now we're going to work out Q. Okay, so let's do that. So Q is equal to MC delta T. The mass of the solution is 50.7 grams. Uh, we can assume the specific heat capacity of the solution is the same as water, 4.198, and delta T is 13.5. So that works out to be 2,861 joules. <coughs> now we can convert our Q to delta H using this equation. Okay, let's do that. So uh, delta H is equal to Q over moles of copper sulfate. 2861 divided by 0 0.05 gives us 57,220 20 joules per mole. Let's convert that into kilojoules. That gives us 57.2 kilojoules per mole. And now, very importantly, we need to remember that that is a negative value because the temperature goes up. It's an exothermic reaction. So that is delta H there. We're going to need that one to put into our energy cycle in the next step. Okay, so here's the energy cycle. Actually, I'll just make a, I'll just make it a bit bigger. It's an energy cycle I did earlier. I'll just make that bigger. Right now, we want to find out this delta H for the react. For, we want to find out this one here, the yellow one. Okay, now we know that this red one here, we've just worked that out. That's minus. 57.2 kilojoules and the question told us that this green one here the student was what was it, it was 8.43 kilojoules per mole okay so delta h the one we're trying to find out we are following the red arrow so we keep that sign the same so that's minus 57.2 but we're going against this green arrow so we change the sign from a plus to a minus minus 8.43. Uh, so that gives us our final answer of 65.63 kilojoules per mole. It is a negative value. Sorry. Yeah. And I really should make give that to three significant figures. So uh, that's going to be uh, minus 65.63 kilojoules per mole and that is what we were set out to find okay so that is a quite a long question there and you have to realize 
really <clears throat> the correct energy cycle, Hess's law energy cycle to use. Otherwise, you wouldn't get very far with that. Okay. That's quite a hard question. Right. Um, now, the thermometer had an uncertainty reading in each temperature reading of 0 0.01. Right. You have to be careful here because we use the thermometer to measure the initial temperature and the final temperature. So the, 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 the total uncertainty is going to be double that. That's going to be 0 0.2 degrees Celsius plus or minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. Uh, you get a 20% the percentage uncertainty, okay? is 20%. So we've got to calculate the temperature change. So normally we'd do it the other way around, of course, we'd say the percentage uncertainty would be equal to the total uncertainty uh, divided by the temperature change. Uh, multiplied by 100. So let's rearrange that to get the temperature change because that's what we need to find out. So the temperature change that they must have had is going to be equal to the total uncertainty divided by the percentage uncertainty multiplied by 100. And that's going to be equal to 0.2 uh, over, uh, it was 20%, was the percentage of uncertainty, multiplied by 100. Uh, and that is going to give us uh, 1 degrees C. So the temperature change they measured must have been 1 degree C, which is a pretty low temperature. And that's why they ended up with this, like, this big uncertainty, 20% in the temperature change for that reaction okay right now that is the end of that question they're going on to here this is to, to do with delta g and delta s and stuff um for uh thiosulfate okay so we've got the reaction here between when you get some thiosulfate solid and you add water to it and you you hydrate it to form the hydrated crystals and they give us delta H and delta G for those. Okay. So you probably realize there that if you know delta H and delta G, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. That means we can work out the entropy change, delta S for that reaction. They give us the standard entropies of two of the reactants there, of, of two of the, the compounds involved in the equation for this one and the water. And what we've got to do is determine the standard entropy of the final thing of thiosulfate up there. So that's what we've got to do. So first of all, we're going to have to work out delta S using this equation. And then using the delta S, we can work out the entropy for the standard entropy for thiosulfate. So let's work out delta S first of all. We're going to, have to uh, rearrange this equation. <clears throat> so let's get the rearrange this equation. We get delta S is going to be equal to uh, delta H minus delta G, all divided by T, the absolute temperature. Okay, um, and let's put the numbers in now then. So T, now, because we are talking about um, standard entropy, okay, we know that T must be equal to 298 Kelvin, okay? Right, so let's put delta S is going to be equal to delta H minus 55.8 minus minus delta G 16.1. So delta S is equal to 0.133 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. Now delta S we normally don't use these units of kilojoules, but you know, we work it into joules per Kelvin. So let's do that. So times it by a thousand. So delta S we get then is going to be equal to 
So that's a negative value there, pretty important. You can tell that's going to be a negative value as well by looking at the equation, because if you look at there, we have got uh, a solid, the thiosulfate, and five molecules of water, and that's all going to a solid. So the entropy, because you're going to have no, you're going to lose all those liquid water molecules. They're going to become, it's going to become more highly ordered. So the entropy will go down. Entropy delta S there is equal to minus 133 uh, joules per Kelvin per mole. Now we need to work out the uh, the, the standard entropy of the thiosulfate there. So we're going to use this equation, of course. Delta S is equal to uh, the sum of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the uh, reactants. So let's just work out what, what is the sum of the entropy of the products. Well, that is simply, going to write it down the side here. Don't really have to do any working out there because there's only one product. It's the hydrated thiosulfate, which is 372.4 plus 300, ignore the plus sign there, sorry. You're always plus 372.4. Uh, and sigma, uh, the sum of the entropy of the reactants, that's a bit more difficult because we've got five molecules of water. So that's going to be five times uh, 69.9. And I'm just going to write, call the other one that we've got to find out S. Let's call that S. That's the entropy of the hydrated stuff. So the the reactants, five times 69.9 is um, 349.5 plus S. Okay, let's gonna put these, let's gonna put these values into this equation on the left then. Okay, put these values in and also our value of the entropy change, minus 133. So we're going to get minus 133 is equal to 372.4 minus 349.5 minus S. Let's solve that for s we get s is equal to 155.9 uh, joules per kelvin per mole it asks us to give it to three significant figures so i'm going to write down s of the thiosulfate which is na so three solid the anhydrous thiosulfate is equal to 156 kilojoules sorry joule joules per kelvin per mole that's the answer that's the final answer there okay next part of the question then there's something totally different about the thiosulfate and it shows the shape of the thiosulfate iron sorry this shows the displayed formula and we have to predict the bond angle and name the shape okay so what we have to think about here is, um, are there any lone pairs? Okay. Well, we, we've we've got we've got four four bonding pairs there, haven't we? Remember, with double bonds, we just treat it as a single bond pair for the for the, when we're doing shape. So we've got four bond pairs. Have we got any lone pairs? No, we haven't because sulfur is in group six. It's got six of its own electrons in the outer shell. And all six of those are being used in bonds. So we've got two in that one, the double one there, two there makes four, one there makes five, and one there makes six. So there's no lone pairs. So for four bond pairs and no lone pairs, it's going to be tetrahedral. And of course, the bond angle for tetrahedral is 109.5 degrees. Okay. 
Right. In some of its reactions, the thiosulfate ion forms the tetrathionate ion. That's when you use, it gets reduced to that when you're doing iodine titrations. Okay. And the, the, uh, that is a dimer. Okay. That means two thiosulfates stuck together. So you've got to draw a displayed formula of the, um, of the S4062 minus ion. Well, here's a thiosulfate ion. Uh, we've got a negative oxygen there and a sulfur. We're going to get another one there. So what we're going to do is we're going to join those two together. Uh, basically join a bond between those two. So I'm just going to rub that out there, that, that negative, and that negative. And that's why it's a reduction because you're going to lose a pair of electrons. So uh, an oxidation, sorry, you're going to lose a pair of electrons there. And you form a new bond between those two sulfurs. And that's the same length as the other ones. It's just the way... I've drawn that there, and there should be a, sorry, that should be an O there, and a minus on that. So that is the um, structure of the tetrathionate ion. Right, now this is a question about inorganic, uh, uh, um, inorganic, so a transition metal reactions. Okay, we start off with uh, well, before we look at the questions here, let's just see what's going on here. We start off with iron 2 sulfide. Now, the sulfide ion is S2 minus, so iron 2 sulfide is going to have that formula, FeS. And you add um, uh, uh, acid to it, and you end up with this complex ion, the Fe2 plus ion in solution, which is pale green. And uh, it's hydrated, uh, six water ligands. Okay, uh, that is actually, um, there's no redox occurring there. I think it asked that later on because the iron is plus two in iron sulfide and it's still plus two in the complex there. So there's no redox occurring there. Right, that's pale green solution. Now we get this orange brown solution when you add chlorine, okay? This orange brown solution. And that you, you should think what kind of things Look, orange brown, they've got iron in them. It's iron three compounds, okay? And chlorine, so it's an oxidation. It's going from the, the green, which is which is plus two, to the brown, which is plus three. It's an oxidation reaction. And the chlorine is actually acting as the oxid. Chlorine is a pretty good oxidizing agent. You should be aware of that. Um, it, it loves to accept electrons, good oxidizing agent. So what we've done there is we've oxidized it to um, the iron three complex, three plus there. That's what's happened there. Right, we've got some hydrogen sulfide, which is a gas, which is given off. And when you react that with, um, when you react that with, with silver nitrate, you get a black precipitate B, okay? Now a black precipitate, you may think, oh, that's gonna be silver metal and there's some kind of redoxing going on there, but it can't be that because it's telling you it's got it's a molar mass of that and that's pretty heavy um and if you think so silver ag has got an mr it's got an ar of 107.9 so it's pretty obvious you've got two silvers in there and it is if you work it out it's ag 2s it's silver sulfide so the you've you've reacted the silver's gone with the sulfide um to form silver sulfide and incidentally the hydrogen and the no3 have gone together to form nitric acid in solution so it's a, it's a precipitation reaction that no redox no acid base a precipitation reaction um let's look at the last thing here um the last thing we've got here is um right we've got we've got manganate okay now manganate you should be aware is the plus seven oxidation state and here it's going to plus two so the manganese has acted as an oxidizing agent so it's oxidized something in the h2s to form a yellow solid well you it can only really be sulfur solid you've oxidized it and hydrogen sulfide here sulfur has got an oxidation number of minus two here it's got an oxidation number of zero so it's oxidized it and the manganate's acted as an oxidizing agent. Right, oh, so, sorry, I should put that, in. let's put that in there, AG2S. Um, um, and the orange brown precipitate, I haven't done that bit yet. So when you add NaOH to um, iron 
what you're going to get is you're going to remove um, uh, this is an, an AOH is an is a base it's going to remove some protons from some of those waters and you're going to form iron hydroxide which is a brown precipitate FeOH3 or you could write FeH2O it's really hydrated so H2O3 OH3 I think um, a, um, OCR are pretty happy with you writing iron FeOH3 there. All right, let's have a look at the questions that they're going to ask then. In the black boxes, write the formula of A and B. It's a bit of a mess now. I can't see what, what A is. Oh, A is the brown precipitate. Yeah, this is A there. So it doesn't, no, it doesn't ask for any explanations there. And B is this black precipitate of silver sulfide. Okay, so we've done that. Two marks. Okay, the student, I think I mentioned this before, the student thinks the reaction of iron 2 sulfide with H plus H2O is a redox reaction. Uh, explain whether, whether he's correct. He's not correct, is he? Because there's no change in oxidation numbers because the iron in iron 2 sulfide is Fe2 plus. So it's got oxidation number of plus 2. That goes to form iron, hydrated iron um, 2 plus ions in solution. So no oxidation there, obvious. Uh, obviously, um, so and this the sulfur, right? Has the sulfur changed oxidation state? Well, it hasn't because in, it goes from being sulfide two minus to being H two S, um, and you can see that its oxidation is minus two here and it's minus two there. And what kind of reaction is it? it doesn't ask you, but it, it is an acid base reaction because the sulfide ion is you can see is acting as a base, accepting H plus ions. Uh, so it's, he's not right. It is not a redox reaction uh, for one mark. Write an equation for the reaction of the iron uh, of the the hydrated Fe two plus with the with chlorine. Remember, I said it was an it was an oxidation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with FeH two O six two plus. I'm going to write two half equations here, and that's going to go FeH2O6, 3 plus. And of course, we're going to have to put an electron there to balance it. The chlorine has acted as an oxidizing agent, so that's going to be Cl2 going to, uh, sorry, Cl2, um, a bit of room there, going to two chloride ions, and it's going to need two electrons there. So that means we're going to have to multiply that one by two before we add them together. Let's do that. So we're going to get the final equation of doing green is 2FeH2O6, uh, 2 plus, plus chlorine gas goes to 2Fe, put the bracket in the wrong place there. 2FeH2O, sorry, 2FeH2O6, 3 plus, plus 2 chloride ions. Okay, construct an equation for the reaction of H2S with manganate ions. Okay, let's do that. So this is the redox reaction. So let's first of all do the manganate half of it. Okay, so we're going to get um, black. We're going to get MnO4 minus. You're probably pretty familiar with this half equation. Let's do the half equations and combine. Goes to Mn2 plus. I need to balance my oxygens by putting in 4H2O. Then I need to balance the hydrogens by putting in H pluses. Then I look at the chart, balance the charges with electrons. Well, I've got plus seven on this side of the equation and only plus two on that side of the equation. So I'm going to need five electrons there to make it balance. So it's a reduction. The manganese gains uh, five electrons. Now the H2S, uh, well, the H2S gas gets converted to a yellow solid, which we said has got to be uh, sulfur, really. And that is an oxidation because it's minus two here. 
going to zero oxidation number there. Right, let's balance this and no oxygens to worry about. Hydrogens, we need to put two H pluses on that side of the equation. Uh, and then to balance the charge, well, we've got zero on this side and we've got my plus two on this side. So I need two negative electrons there. Now I need to, we need to combine those two half equations, right? We've got five electrons here and we've got two there. So we're gonna have to multiply this one by two and multiply that one by five. Okay, so the final equation, I'll do in blue, it would be two MnO4 minus plus uh, 16 H plus. But the electrons are gonna cancel out when we put those in and we need five hydrogen sulfides goes to two MN2 pluses, uh, eight waters, five sulfur, and then we've got to do five and 10 H plus there. And you can see we've got H pluses on both sides of the equation, so we should cancel those out. So I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of that will become six H plus. So I'll just rub that out look, there. 6H plus, and we've got our balanced equation, right? It's a lot of work for two marks, I think it was. Yeah, two marks, a lot of work. Okay. Now, C is a, this com this question looks quite horrible there. It's not too bad. Um, there's a lot of different ways of answering this. I think it's probably worse to mark it than actually to do it. Right, so let's go ahead and just see what we can work out um, step by step here. Okay, right now, you've got to make some educated guesses here with these sort of questions. And you may be wrong and then you have to go, but you, you may be right. Right, it's a hydrated ionic compound. Okay, so that means it's going to be dot H2O in it with this as your formula. Now, it's got iron in it. And what no, what I noticed there, you've got three, um, you've got three nitrogen atoms. Now, ionic compounds with, with nitrogen, them, negative ion with nitrogen, you're probably talking about things with a nitrate ion. Okay, now the fact that there's three of them probably means that this iron is in is in the Fe three plus state. So my first instinct was to think that it was a is a hydrated iron nitrate, iron three nitrate. So iron three nitrate is FeNO three three times, right? And then we've got it, and there's going to be some waters in there, xh two O, right? How many waters? Let's see if, if this works, and it does work. I think you'll see, right? Um, well, the all of these 18 hydrogens have got to be in the water. So let's say it's nine, hyd nine H2O. Okay, let's do that. That means like in nine lots of two, 18, nine H2O. Let's just count, see if we've got the right number of oxygens there. Well, we've got uh, three times three, we've got nine oxygens in the nitrates, and we've got nine there, which is equal to 18. So that's a, so. Uh, when I was when I first look at this question, I was fairly confident that that is the that is the hydrated salt, and that's going to help us a lot now. Okay, right. So I would put that down, write that down because it's a it's a six marker. This you know it doesn't structure it at all, but um, I would write that down. You probably get some credit for it. Okay. The student investigates thermal decomposition. So stage one, what did he do? What she what did she do? Um, 0 0.003 moles of C, yeah, was heated gently just to remove the water crystallization. These nine H2Os here, just to get rid of them. And 0.486 grams of water is collected, leaving the anhydrous D. Let's so let's see how many moles of water, and how many and we can do that. So let's let's do right moles of H2O. Moles H2O is equal to mass over MR. We have got 0.486 grams of water divided by 18. That gives us 
0.027 moles. Now let's work out the ratio of moles of moles of compound or moles of moles of the anhydrous compound D, yeah, moles of D, which we think is just iron nitrate, to moles water. Well, that's going to be, we said we have got 0 0.03 moles of D. And we've got, what was it there, 0 0.027, I've missed the 7 off there. 0 0.027 moles of water. Simplify that ratio by divided by the smallest number, which is 0 0.003. And we get a one to nine ratio, which would support the fact that we have got it. And that that is, we've got nine molecules of water uh, in the hydrated salt. So that confirms our original uh, guess there. Okay, let's look at stage two now. So you get strong heating here. Now you should know. Remember, you should remember when you when you heat up a a, a nitrate, okay, uh, a metal nitrate, except for group one, most metal nitrates will decompose to give you an oxide, an NO2 gas, and also oxygen gas, okay, so that's, that, that's what happens there, okay, now, so we're going to strongly heat 0 0.03 moles of D, uh, which which gives us the oxide E, okay? Now, let's think about that oxide, oxide E. Well, the metal nitrate we're saying is Fe NO3 three times. So iron is in the plus three oxidation state there. So what's the metal oxide is going to be iron three oxide, which is Fe2O3. Right now, look at the MR of, of of this of of the oxide E. This is E. The MR it says is 159.6. If you work out the uh, the MR of iron three oxides, it is 159.6. So that's another uh, <clears throat> another confirmation of our original suspicion. And we're going to get this 200 centimeters cubed of gases, and we're saying those gases are going to be uh, NO2 and O2. Now we're going to have to do some balancing here now. Right, we've got two ions on the right, so that means you're going to have to put a two there. So that means we're going to get six moles of NO2. And how many oxygen atoms are unaccounted for? Well, we've got here, we've got three times three is nine. We've got 18 on this side, and we've got three there, and we've got 12 there, so that makes 15. So three there. So that's going to be one and a half. That's the balancing number for the oxide there. Okay. Right. Now, these are both gases. Right. So we're now going to say... Right. Let's have a look at the volume of this gas made. It's 270 centimetres cubed, or RTP. Okay. And this is coming from... Right, so what we're going to say here is, look, um, two moles of that are going to give you um, six moles of NO2 and one and a half moles of O2, which is a total of uh, 7.5 moles of gas. So two moles is going to give us 7.5 moles of gas, so one mole is going to give us 3.75 moles of gas. Let's check that. Three point seven five moles of gas. But how many moles do they actually decompose here? It's 0 0.03 moles. Okay, so 
that means 0 0.03 moles, 0, 0, 003, sorry, is going to give us 0 0.003 times 3.745, which is equal to 0 0.1 sorry, 0 0.0112, 0 0.0125 moles of gas. Now, what volume does that occupy? So the volume of a gas in centimeters cubed is equal to the moles multiplied by the molar volume of RTP, which is 24,000 centimeters cubed. Uh, so that's going to be 0 0.01125 times 24,000. Unfortunately, that works out to be um, 270 centimetres cubed, which is how much it should have been. It said there that you've got 270 centimetres cubed. So, so far, all of our, our prediction that it's uh, iron nitrate hydrated with nine molecules of water seems to be correct. OK, now. I was going to clear up this to do stage three. OK, so stage three, well, what is stage three is all about is, right, he gets the gas, he gets the two gases, which are, which are, F is uh, NO2 and G is oxygen, OK, we're, we're presuming, and he, he condenses it, cools it down. The NO2 will condense at a fairly, re you know, reasonably reasonable temperature, around about zero. Oxygen, of course, won't condense, and that remains as a gas. And then to confirm this, it says gas G relights a glowing splint, which obviously means it must be oxygen. Right, let's just do the calculations for that then. So clear up this mess here. Actually, I want to keep some of that. All gone. Okay, so... Um, Right, let's do this next bit. We want to confirm that this gas uh, F is NO2, and we know that this gas has got to be is oxygen. That's the leftover stuff. Right, so we did say here that um, we said that um, uh, one mole of this stuff is going to give us three moles of NO2. So, but we didn't have one mole, we had 0 0.0C003. And so that means we're going to get 0 0.009 moles of NO2. And it says that that had a mass of 4.41 grams. Let's just see if that's right. So mass of the NO2 should be equal to the moles times by the MR. The moles is... 0 0.009 in this experiment the mr of no2 is 46 and do that you do get 0.414 grams so that is confirming our suspicion that the gas is no2 uh or, or another it's another gas which is mr46 anyway but it couldn't really be anything except except that okay now we need to just confirm this because they do tell us the the volume of oxygen left over so we should confirm that okay so what well, I'm going to just clear this again. Um, okay, so it says here, right, let's have a look. We said that one mole, oh, let's do this first of all, right? two moles of that give us one and a half moles of oxygen. So one mole gives us uh, 0.75 moles of oxygen. So 0 0.003 moles, which is how much we started off with, should give us um, 2.25 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 moles of oxygen. Now, what's the volume of that many moles of oxygen going to be? Well, volume of the gas is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the volume at RTP, which is 24,000 centimetres cubed. So that's going to be 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3, 
multiplied by 24,000, and that gives us 54 centimeters cubed, which confirms it, which is the right amount and confirms our suspicions there. Okay, so there is that, there is that uh, question and uh, that's, you know, you can do it in all different order really, but that is, that should get, doing all those calculations, making all those observations should get you full six marks. Right, that is the last question on the paper. So that is the end of the video.